Today, we're going to be checking out more space. We've got the black hole that kills galaxies. Quasars, I think that's how you say it. I'm a massive fan of space, so yeah, let's check this out. The universe looks like a vast, empty ocean sprinkled with rare islands of galaxies. It's so but cool how big it is. is an illusion. Just a small fraction of all atoms are found in galaxies, while the rest is thought to be drifting in between in the intergalactic medium. Uh. Like the roots of some massive tree, gas spreads out from each galaxy, gravity funneling fresh mass into this dense cosmic forest. Here in the intergalactic medium are the raw materials of creation. Hydrogen and helium, woven into sheets and filaments that flow into galaxies where they eventually create stars. But if we look closely, we see who's actually in charge. Quasars, the single most powerful Quasars. objects in existence. As small as a grain of sand compared to the Amazon River, they reside in the centers of some galaxies, shining with the power of a trillion stars, blasting Jesus, out man. huge jets of matter, completely reshaping the cosmos around them. They're so powerful that they can kill a galaxy. What are they, and how do they mold the structure of the universe at their whim? It's actually mad, like, when you actually think about how big the universe is and, like, what's in it and what's, like, so dangerous in it but so far away. Everywhere you look, crazy. weird things in the sky. In the 1950s, astronomers noticed mysterious loud radio waves coming from spots all over the sky. They were named quasi-stellar radio sources, or quasars, because they were dots like stars but were seen in radio waves rather than visible light. Everything about them was strange. Some flickered, others emitted high-energy x-rays in addition to radio waves, but all seemed to be tiny. They all moved extremely fast, as much as over 30% the speed of light. The only uh, explanation was that they must have been so distant that their apparent speed was actually the expansion of the universe moving them away from us. But these... Hey, hey, that's not a bad thing. Hey, yeah, you, <laughs> Quasars, you keep moving the speed of light uh, away. Like, you, you move with the universe. Do you know what? That's mad as well, like, how the universe is constantly expanding. But you're, like, expanding how? Like, expanding one. You, you know what I mean? Oh, it's actually mad. Enormous distances meant that quasars couldn't just be stars. We're so but small. But the active cores of galaxies billions of light years away. And it gets crazier. To appear so bright and loud, Given these vast distances, they are thousands of times brighter than the entire Milky Way. Yo. Monsters exploding and screaming into the void with a violence not thought possible before. As we mapped the sky, we discovered over a million quasars, and they all seem to be very far away. That's good. Looking into space That's far good. away means very long ago, because light takes so long to reach us. Right. Quasars were common in the early universe, having peaked in number 10 billion years ago when galaxies and the universe itself were still very young. Let's go back in time, just 3 billion years after the Big Bang, and see what was going on back then. The incredible Isn't power Isn't it mad how we know all this? How could an early baby galaxy be so incredibly bright and violent? All that light and radiation couldn't be stars, as there weren't nearly enough of them. And oh God, since right. galaxies tend to grow with time by merging, the starlight from small galaxies shouldn't be far brighter than any galaxy today. There's only one way to Jesus. generate the vast amounts of energy a quasar shines with, feeding supermassive black holes. We still don't know how exactly they formed, but it seems that every galaxy has one in their center. But how can the brightest things in the universe be black holes, which trap anything and everything that crosses their event horizon? Well, the light of a quasar is not coming from inside these black holes. I was legit about to just say that, right? The video says black holes, quasars, and then we're talking about quasars being the brightest thing. You know what I mean? Like, huh? Rather, it comes from the space around them. Right. A massive orbiting disk of gas called an accretion disk. Quasars use the same fuel as stars to shine, matter. It's just that black holes are the most efficient engines for converting matter into energy in the universe. The energy released by matter falling into a black hole can be 60 times greater than that released by nuclear fusion in the core of a star, because the energy released by a black hole comes from gravity, not from nuclear reactions. Matter falling into a black hole speeds up to almost the speed of light before it crosses the event horizon, buzzing with an incredible amount of kinetic energy. 
Of course, once inside the black hole, it takes that energy with it. You only get to witness this energy if you drop your matter in the right way. Fall straight down and the outside universe gets nothing. But when you have a lot of matter, it spirals in incredibly fast towards the event horizon, forming a disk. Collisions between particles... Yo, I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like, I've seen quite a few of these space videos and I'm into space and I'm like, you know, I'm super interested in this right now. But I am still lost to how, like, that even works. How does, how does a black hole, when something goes into it, it's gone, right? But how is that forming a massive black... Friction heated up to hundreds of thousands of degrees. In a space how not is that much not going bigger than in our the black hole, system, though? the core of a galaxy can release many times more energy than all its stars combined. This is what a quasar is. A supermassive black hole having a feast. And these black holes eat a lot. Typical quasars consume 1 to 100 Earth masses of gas per minute. Okay, that's crazy. 10 billion years ago, the universe was about a third of its current size. So the intergalactic medium was much less spread out, meaning the filaments of gas around quasars could feed them a banquet, making them vomit insane amounts of light and radiation. Right. The brightest quasar... Wait, so the... I, what, what I've taken in from this, the black hole is eaten, it's eaten, it's eaten, and then it's sending out light radiation and whatever around it it's like it's like vomiting after it's okay okay i i thought i thought with a black hole as soon as something goes in it's trapped in there boom right Quasars power jets tangling the magnetic field of the matter around them into a narrow cone like a particle accelerator they launch enormous beams of matter out plowing through the circumgalactic medium forming plumes of matter that grow to hundreds of thousands of light years in size Mad. it's almost unfathomable in scale a tiny spot in a galaxy carving out patches of the universe hundreds of thousands of light years long. Bro, that but is so can't big! Eat long, maybe a few million years, because their feast ultimately kills their galaxy. How quasars kill galaxies? Okay, maybe killing is a bit of an exaggeration. A galaxy is still there after its quasar turns off, but it will never be the same again. Quasars, being among the hottest and brightest things in the universe, break their galaxies by heating them up too much and stopping star formation. Stars are gas that collapsed in on itself and then got really hot. But in a cloud of gas that's already hot, atoms are moving quickly. When they collide, they hit hard, exerting pressure that resists gravity's squeeze. So hot gas cannot form stars. Instead, the best gas for forming stars is already cold and won't put up a fight when it's time to collapse into a star. On top of that, quasars push gas out of their galaxies. Not only does this starve the quasar, but its galaxy loses the raw materials for new stars. As sad as it's this so sounds, cool. it might be a good thing for life. The alternative can be far more dangerous. Too many stars. New stars forming is usually followed by massive stars exploding in supernovae, so right. planets would be burned sterile. But of course, it's more complicated. Like the intro. Do you know what's mad? Like, I've seen quite a few of these videos, right? And it's always like destruction, like destroying. So many of these black holes are super big, destroying this, destroying that, blah, blah. It's actually mad how, like, after so many years, the universe still has stuff in it. <laughs> Like, it's actually bad. Because every time I watch one of these videos, it's like, oh, you got, you got millions and God, God knows how, how many numbers of black holes, right? That will absolutely destroy anything that goes near it. But the only, uh, the only reason why there's things in the universe left is because legit, it's so big. And it's actually mad to think about how big it actually is. Because of our it's own biosphere, every piece of the galaxy is dependent on and influencing every other part of the galactic environment. While hot things like quasars and supernovae tend to push gas out of the galaxy, shockwaves and quasar jets can also compress gas, making new stars at least for a short time. But in general, we can say that without things becoming a bit more chill, we would not exist today. Which brings us to our final question. Did the Milky Way have a quasar in the past? It's unclear if every galaxy went through a quasar phase, but understanding distant quasars may provide clues to the history of the Milky Way. 
galaxies don't do a good job of preserving their history. Like sand on a beach, the endless churning mixes away the clues to their past. Right. It's possible the Milky Way was once a quasar, which Mad. may have allowed our supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star to have grown to four million times the mass of the Sun. And oh, I've as heard about this, actually. Now, Sagittarius A star could turn into a quasar in the future. In a few billion okay, years, buddy. the Milky Way will merge with Andromeda. We've seen over a hundred double quasars in galaxies smash Wait, will merge turn how many years? into a quasar in the future. In a few billion years, the Milky Way will merge with Andromeda. We've seen over a hundred double quasars in galaxies smash. Wait, what will happen? Where, like, I know a few billion years is a very long time away, right? And we're, we're probably on different planets, different galaxies, or whatever at that point. But what would actually happen, like, to Earth, for example, if when these two uh, galaxies merge? ...together, where fresh gas is provided for the central black holes. But it won't last for long. When galaxies merge, so do their supermassive black holes, uh. sinking into the center of their new galaxy, kicking up dust and stars in every direction. We don't know whether this will happen, but it would truly be an incredible sight. Maybe some beings in the far future are going to witness it and Yo, be in awe crazy. of what they see. Crazy. But you don't have to wait that long. I know. Yo, with technology, the way it's moving right now, maybe we'll be able to, like, go into a tube, go into a, some freezing portal thing, whatever, freeze ourselves and be out there in a couple billion years. I know. Really good video, though. Enjoyed that. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys got any recommendations to any videos at all, let me know as well. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys in the next video.